About nine years ago, I dug up Bill Cushenberry's long lost Silhouette 2 space coupe. And what we'd like to do is just uh, get some feedback from you on what you know about Bill and uh, some of the things you work together on. If you could just share some of those thoughts yeah, with be us. Be happy to, be happy to. Well, I got one thing to say about Cushenberry, which I call him Cushy. Yes. To me, he was the best customizer in our group. And put number one, really and That's number great. two, he was one of the best idea design guys too. He was terrific. Bill was absolutely unbelievable. And it is too bad that we lost him and he didn't carry on the legacy like the rest of us, like Starbird and Dick Dean and all of us, because he deserved it very much, very much so. I mean, he was so good because he we had the group, you know, we had Baylon, we had Cushenberry, we had Winfield, we had me in LA, we had Starbird back east, we had the Alexander boys. So the whole group of us that had a pioneer in this was interesting. Yeah. But every time we go to up to Monterey to do that show up there, Cushy was there. And then when he came down to California, down to Los Angeles there. You see how good Cushy was? I, still got a I had him do all the fenders on our Batmobile. Is that right? I mean, the car was all metal. I said, Cushy, I need help. I said, we got to get this thing done in three weeks. I got 10 guys working in every different direction. I said, can you help me? I'll be there, George. And he came down there. And he shaped those fenders out. So he, did days. he do that in your shop? Yeah, he did that in our shop. Well, that's great. Work. That's... And uh, so we enjoyed everything about Cushy. Uh, to me, every car that he's done was the best. The workmanship was a craftsman. He was a quality man. And the best part, he was fun. The great fun guy. And yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't talk enough. We could spend several hours just reminiscing about all the things we had in those days at the shows from Monterey to uh, Harry Costa in, in uh, Santa Rosa, Baggy in Sacramento, and Blackie in Fresno. Yes. You know, you couldn't get a better group of guys. And, and we lost Cushy and we lost Wilhelm. It was two, two wonderful, wonderful guys. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. uh, That was a great period of time when you all were together. And yeah. You traveled with him on the AMT yeah. circuit as well. Yeah, we went on the, the uh, Ford Motor Company's uh, Ford Custom Car Caravan. Uh -huh. He was a, a, a member of the group, which was with us together with the cat. And uh, along with that, of course, traveling all over the country and uh, being a part of all the shows. It was, uh, we weren't considered customizers, we were family. We all worked together, we never had any contention. Nobody was in competition for anybody else. Everybody won their certain awards. But that's what was good about that team of great guys that we had together. That was great. So like I said, I could probably go for hours and days to yeah. reminisce about the archives of Cushy and things that we did together. But uh, to me, uh, like I said, he was, again, the top of the, top of the heap. There were many things you're putting together in the archives and the legacy of Cushy is very well warranted. And I'm sure that the many Many viewers and, and customizers and collectibles and enthusiasts will always uh, be thankful that it's coming out. And it was a sad thing. You know, he died in December of 1998, and uh, I found it in April of 1999. Oh, my and, God. Uh, well, you knew Bob Butts. Butts was a big collector. He had my number four Batmobile. Yes. Uh -huh. And he worked on a lot of, we worked on a lot of movies yeah, together. Yeah. Even the Manson buggy that was stolen from us. That ended up uh, at uh, one of his collection with Butts. So, was, so Bob was a, another major contributor to the automotive uh, oh, yeah, enthusiasts. Oh really yeah, he really was. He really was. A really lot of the film lost. business and uh, a lot of the movie and TV cars. Yeah. But uh, yeah. well, it's good that you uh, got it moving and getting it where it's going to become historical because yes. it'll be a, a major historical piece that will sure end up in many of the different museums and the car shows that everybody looks for. Because nobody in the car show circle ever forgets Cushenberry. No, yeah, he always right. comes up in yeah. some way or some conversation about yeah. working about cars. Some of the uh, cars have ended up in museums and collectors like uh, Old Quinn and uh, in the Texas and uh, Pratt and uh, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and all yeah. these different yeah. there. The Volo Museum in uh, Chicago, Illinois, and Gatlinburg, Tennessee, also. 
they all look at either having a Christian burial car in there sometime or other. Yeah. And uh, a lot of them have been popping up here and there and ended up in different things like in there's Starburst. A number, or, yeah, there's yeah. a number of those Christian burial cars that have been yeah, restored yeah, right yeah, now. They're yeah. all coming back up, yeah. you know, which is a great thing. Well, it's a, a major, major collectible with the uh, first group of under 12 guys that were pioneer customizers throughout started out in California and extended on into the eastern area. But uh, right. that's what made it a wonderful, yeah. wonderful world. Well, look where we are today. It's, a, it's fantastic. Look at it today. I mean, yeah, you it's go, unbelievable. I go to shows all over the world now, customizing in California. We're talking about customizing world, worldwide. Absolutely. So.